Taking my sin, my cross, my shame Rising again, I bless your name You are my all in all When I fall down, you pick me up When I am dry, you fill my cup You are my all in all Jesus, Lamb of God Worthy is your name 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 Worthy is your name Worthy is your name. Hello. St. Mark's United Methodist Church, my sisters and my brothers in Christ, my friends in the Lord who are listening from all over this world. <laughs> we welcome you to this special hour when we pause the running around the house, the work and everything and just connect to the Lord and with the word of the Lord at this moment. I congratulate you for making the time and for remembering uh, this hour is very special. I always look forward for this time uh, and I especially look forward to see those of you who are on uh, Zoom and who are able to show your faces <laughs> because I miss you and I look forward to seeing you every Wednesday. And so if you are able to show your face, please do that and know that you're making your pastor very happy. <laughs> Besides, it's only fair that as you see my face, I also get to see your face. Isn't that right? <laughs> Thank you, Sister Mariner. <laughs> That's my friend Mariner right there. If you want to know who is my friend Mariner, come to, to St. Mark's and you will meet my people. Amen. I see, I see you, Sister Osna Smith, um, uh, Sister Myrna, and I see the names of my friend Marimo. I see my friend Pauline Bad. I see the names of my friends Yoland Haynes and uh, my friend Delano Steele, uh, my friend Fatima Kisiko. Even she is hiding her face from me. That's all right. <laughs> I see I see my friend Hall and uh, the numbers that I see on the Zoom. And I know that on Facebook, we do have uh, a lot of friends over there as well. This is the day that the Lord has made and we cannot help it but to rejoice and be glad on it. Sometimes the technology messes up with our hour, but other times the technology cooperate and everything just goes smoothly. Don't you just love when that happens, when everything goes smoothly. So I am going to play another St. Mark's Voices, um, uh, Voices of Praise and Worship team. Uh, you know, I... I I hope they can record new songs pretty soon <laughs> because I have been playing the same songs. I love the voices of St. Mark's. So I'm gonna play another song, but before we do that, 
I just want you to know that today we will base our biblical reflection on the book of Proverbs. That's Old Testament scripture all the way to the book of Proverbs. That's a very interesting book. You, you want to check it out when you have some time. Uh, uh, so we're going to go straight to the first chapter of Proverbs chapter one. And we are not going to keep going on and on. And we're only going to focus on two verses today. <laughs> Those are verses eight and nine on the first chapter of the book of Proverbs. So while you prepare for that, I will delight you with another um, a selection from St. Mark's United Methodist Church here in Brooklyn, New York. Um, uh, St. Mark's Praise and Worship Team. Thank you to St. Mark's United Methodist Church in Brooklyn, New York, uh, their praise and worship team for you sharing your wonderful voices with us. I, I particularly like those two songs that I just played. You will notice that I keep playing them. Uh, anything about Jesus, hallelujah. It is a joy to see everyone. Um, uh, I see uh, my friend, my friend Neverson, my friend Ines, my friend Joanna, uh, Joanne Neverson, they they did join in, and many others uh, on Facebook and and those who are calling in. Please do remember to help uh, someone who may not know 
uh, how to call in to the Zoom number because we are no longer using the conference call as before. And so give a call to our seniors, check up to see if they got the right number. If not, do give them the Zoom number and the, the password. We don't wanna leave anyone behind. Uh, uh, Sister Pauline Bard, uh, yeah, I, I know you are very good with uh, follow-up and uh, uh, contacting uh, our members. So when you do that, please remember to make sure they have the right call-in number and password for the Zoom. Um, uh, that, that's, that's your special assignment. <laughs> Thank you so much. My friend Pauline Bud always helps me out. Now, um, before we go to the scriptures, I would like us to just pause and pray. Uh, pause and pray. Take a moment for your own self as we as we prepare to pray and also as we prepare to engage on the scriptures amen let us pray lord we are grateful this night we thank you for your mercy you are a good god you always take care of us you always watch over us you take care of all of your children all over this world. And so tonight we are thankful that you gave us this chance to gather together and that you have been our help thus far. We know, Lord, that you will continue to watch over us. You never get tired. Whether we get it right or wrong, you are still our good God. You provide life for us and you even provide for means of life. When we run out of money, somehow, some way, you provide for us. When we have no idea what to put on the table, somehow, somehow, you find a way, Lord, to feed us. And so we are grateful for all of that. Thank you for the clothes we wear. Thank you for um, everything you give to us every day. But most importantly, thank you for people, our fellow human family, uh, whether they are direct family members or distant relatives, cousins, friends, people in the community and people around the globe. We know that we are part of one big family under one God. We thank you for them. We pray and that you will grant everyone joy and protection over their struggles. We pray, O oh God, at this moment, that you will enlighten our minds and fill our spirits with your presence so we can indeed be joyful as we listen up and uh, go through a commentary of this first chapter of Proverbs, verses eight and nine. We thank you, Lord, that as we continue to seek you, to set you, to learn and to seek understanding of your holy word, that, Lord, you will indeed mature our faith and help us to be more clear about your will. So bless us now and uh, use us all, O oh God, for your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, beloved, let us go to the scriptures. You know that I always like to bring up at least two different translations, <laughs> put them in contrast, and, and see what one does not make it more clear than the other, and, uh, and just benefit from all of that. So on the book of Proverbs, chapter one, verse eight and nine, the word says, listen, my son, to your father's instruction and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. Now, 
that was the NIV translation. Now I'm gonna go to my other favorite translation, um, the African American Jubilee edition. This is how they put it. My child, <laughs> I like that better because it's, it's, it's no discrimination, <laughs> no gender discrimination. The NIV says, listen, my son. And so if you are a daughter, you might feel, well, it doesn't concern me. It's only for the sons. But the, the, the African Jubilee edition make, made it more clear and more inclusive. They say, my child, <laughs> obey the teachings of your parents altogether. The NIV says, my son, you are to listen to your father's instructions and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Now, on the African Jubilee edition, the translators here say, my child, which is both son and daughter. No one is left out. My child, obey the teachings of your parents, not just your father and not just your mother, your parents, period. Now, um, on, on the Proverbs, uh, I mean, on the NIV translation, the translators there say, they are meaning the teaching and the, the instructions from your parents. They are a garland to grace your head and the teachings from your parents are a chain to adorn your neck. Now, the choice of words on the African Jubilee edition says, and wear their teachings as you are ruled a lovely heart or a pretty necklace. <laughs> you see, I mean, as I always say, there's really no essential difference per se. It's just the details of the, the choice of the word. You know, each word highlights something. It puts more tone, more coloring differently than another term. But essentially, whether, whether you are based on one translation or the other, you will not miss what is essential about, uh, about the message of God there. So it's all clearly communicated. Now we're gonna, we're gonna uh, leave the translations behind and, and just focus on the main content. What is going on <laughs> on these two verses? Very short scripture, two verses only. What is it that um, God, is trying to convey to us. You know, in the Bible, we listen to God saying that parents, you know, parents, your mom, your dad, um, your parents are like an ambas ambassador of God to you the child. Your mom and your dad are like representatives of God, are like the image of God to you. Now, <laughs> we could spend a full month and even more discussing just that. <laughs> but we are, for the time period that we have left, we have good 30 minutes plus. So we are, we are gonna to try to make as much benefit of that time as, as possible. Just talking about this. Why is God placing the parent on the face of a child 
and associate those parents with an image of God, God's self. Why? How can a human parent, me, that I'm a parent, you know, <laughs> God have graced me with, uh, 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 with children. Um, uh, not as many as I had dreamed of on my youth, <laughs> but just enough as God intended. And I'm so grateful. I'm, I'm so proud of my children. Now, why would God say that I, as a parent, I am the image of God to my children? I am just a human being. Anyone who is a human being is guilty of so many mistakes, so many sins. We do so many things that hurt our own selves and we hurt the people that are close to us, around us, people in our family, friends, our coworkers, our peers, uh, uh, you know, that's what sin does. It breaks the relationship. It hurts the relationship. It disrupts the smooth flow of love and fellowship amongst people. My question to you is, why would God then use parents as an example of God to children. So I'm gonna let you uh, rest with that question <laughs> for a while. If you want to write your comments on the Facebook, go ahead. And then that's one thing. The second thing is that children are not children forever, you know. <laughs> children are not children forever. They are not, I mean, they are, they are children forever. They are your children forever, but they don't remain uh, like minors forever. That's what I mean. Uh, so they do grow up. Uh, a child is just a state uh, of growth. And after a certain number of years, uh, that child, um, uh, you know, at least that's our hope and our expectation, that, that child will grow into an adult as well. And sometimes that child too becomes eventually a parent as well. Now, at that time when your child has grown up, um, is now an adult person, whether they have a family of their own or not, what counts really is that they are now an adult. And so uh, as they are adults themselves, does this rule still apply? Um, do you as their parent, the parent of grown up children, are you still to, uh, be regarded as under this image of God in the presence of your children? Or is that imagery applicable only when the children are still young and minors, little kids, babies, youth, teenagers? Well, that's another one for you to think about. <laughs> And so number three, what if the parents are like really messed up? I get so messed up that I can't even keep my, uh, you know, my children under my direct care. Other family members might step in to fill in the gap. They might take my kids and raise them because I, the parent, am messed up for whatever reason. 
Um, are those children of mine, my biological children, are they still supposed to look at me and give me uh, that respect, that honor, and those courtesies um, as if they were, you know, in the presence of an image of God? That's number what now? Is that number three or four? <laughs> All right, you keep the count. Now, <clears throat> What if I, I, as a parent, you know, you know, life is very unpredictable. There are situations that always happen outside of our control. And so I eventually find myself, I am in a jail or in any uh, embarrassing, shameful, terrible situation. And everybody now, you know, they're just condemning me and, uh, 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 even want me dead. So, what happens with this image? What happens with this with this image um, of God, ambassador of God, a representative of God, or or some kind of an an image of God to my children? Is that still applicable at that moment when I'm in situations of shame, embarrassment, and guilty, condemnation, judgment, and even jail time? Okay. Uh, I'm sure you are keeping the count because I'm not keeping the count. I'm just raising these issues <laughs> for us to, to ponder upon and reflect. Now, um, you know, there's really no fixed time per se when a person um, is entitled to have children of their own or children of his or her own. Um, each person is different. So you can't quite set a parameter. Uh, you, you will at least wish and expect that um, a minimum adult age, you know, um, would be appropriate for a person to begin to bear children uh, 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 of his or her own. You know, that children come with responsibilities and uh, uh, it's not just bringing children and you know there's, there's there's responsibilities behind that there are lots of things behind it so you will expect and wish and pray that uh, uh, one will reach a certain reasonable a mature age um, um, before the person can uh, you know bring children of their own but of course, you know, reality, reality is reality. Reality is different from expectations and wishes and desires, right? So we see children having other children and so on and so forth. That's all right. Now, my question though is, how about young parents? Very, 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 very young. By young parents, uh, I, don't, I don't mean, uh, 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 just a person who is on uh, their twenties or thirties by young parents, I mean um, parents who have children when they themselves might still look um, uh, or, or be considered or be in the age uh, uh, of being children themselves, little children themselves. Um, let's say teenagers, for example. The word that we are trying, the, our research here, what we are trying to understand here and to ponder and to reflect on is the saying in the Bible that, pres, uh, in which uh, the, the Bible, and, and uh, 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 of course, God is saying that children 
obey your parents and look at your parents, consider your parents, afford to your parents the respect and honor uh, that you would give to God. Because on earth, yes, there's God in heaven, but here on earth, your parents, you know, have that image of, 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 of God. The Bible does not say that your parents are your God. It does not say that your parents are your, uh, uh, you know, are your, are your savior or anything like that. The Bible does not say that your parents are perfect or exempt from any mistakes or sins. Uh, and the Bible, however, does not also say that, uh, also does not say that this rule, this advice is to be apl applied only to those parents who are of a certain characteristic or description, <laughs> who fit a particular expectation or description. The word of God simply says, children, obey your parents, love your parents, respect your parents, honor your father and mother, and your days on this earth, if you do that, what will happen to your days of living on this earth? Your days will be enlarged. Um, uh, you will be blessed. Um, if you fail to give honor, dignity, and respect to the woman and the man who give birth to you, then you know uh, you are you are in direct violation of the guidelines from God. Now we have come up with several questions and you could add on to the list of questions that I ask. You can add more questions. <laughs> can add more questions there. Um, and so is it, do I have to respect my parents? Do I have to um, uh, listen to my parents? Do I have to honor my parents? Do I have to love them? Do I have to uh, obey my parents? No matter what. So that 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 in a, in, a, in 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 a summary, you know, that's 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 the question we are wrestling with today, based on the scriptures. Are these words? referring to those parents who have a positive, acceptable, applauded conduct, behavior, and attitude? Are the parents who are judged to be troubled or troubled or uh, a mess or a disaster or whatever uh, description uh, they give to suggest that they are not in good stand as parents. Are those parents excluded from this, from this word? Or are they equally included? Well, I'm gonna give you my personal opinion about this. <laughs> not to limit your thinking or creative uh, thinking. Keep, keep, keep thinking, keep analyzing. But this is what I think, and this is what I believe. I think and I believe that children obey your parents, love your mom and dad, love your, love your parents, respect them, honor them. It's really a rule of thumb. <laughs> no conditions whatsoever attached. That woman gave birth to you. She may be messed up with drugs today or whatever's her issue. But that woman, in spite of all the troubles that she might be or might going through or might be a victim of or whatever situation affects her, that woman and that man helped bring you here in this world. And so the image of the father and mother, the image of a parent. You know, when God says that your human parents are like 
you know, they, they carry this image of God. Uh, it, 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 it speaks to the respect and the dignity because we all collectively are children of one God, under one God. Whether we get it right or whether we get it wrong, that God never chases us away from the home, the home that God has created, has built up with God's own hands for us. We enjoy the liberties, the pleasures, the joys, the fortunes of this earthly home, you know, that God has put together for us. On the day when you get it right, you still enjoy the sunshine. When it's the sun, sunshine that day. If it's a snow day, you will also enjoy that snow. Whether you hate snow or love snow, you will be subjected to that snow too. God does not discriminate. God provides equal treatment to all the people, to all of God's children. It is up to me, it's up to you to choose, you know, to wanna embrace this God or not. But when it comes to God's turn, in terms of how God relates and treats us, how is God a provider to us? God discriminates numbered. The rich, the poor, the good, the bad, the well-behaved, the well-mannered, the, the, the well-spoken and the mean ones, we are all beneficiaries of the same quantity, same quality of air we breathe, same environment we, we live in. There's no a borough of those who are better than those who are worse than the other, we all share everything. When God dispatches rain, the rain comes to bless the land. You know, the land and it falls on the top of the roofs of all, the good and bad, all of us together. That's our God. God provides equal treatment and equal care, equal love. And definitely we know that God went to the cross and paid um, a ransom for our sins, for all of our sins. Not only for people who go to church, people who are Christians, but for all the world. Now, of course, it's up to me, it's up to you to choose to believe so that you could be a, a beneficiary, you know, of everything to do with God or not. So that's, that's, that's the choice that each one of us have to do. But you can't put the blame in God in anything. God has made every opportunity available to all of us. And so this God, the image of God that is, is uh, mentioned by the scripture in, in a relationship and in association with human parents, with parents, uh, uh, is that, uh, that, you know, the parents on one hand are expected and charged with the responsibility to love and to care for their children, not to discriminate between those children who are more obedient, who are, uh, are less of a headache to you, those children who make you much happier. And, uh, you know, they, they recognize you, they acknowledge you, they respect you, they honor you, and they give you gifts on Mother's Day, they give you gifts on Father's Day, they, 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 you know, they support you when you are sick and when you are in need, they will help you out or what. But, you know, you as a parent, you are really expected to take the image of God and love your, your children the same way, no matter what. Those you're most happy with, and those who are always bringing you problems and putting you in trouble, and they always take you to court, they always take you to your knees. Those two deserve and need your love. As in reality, you will find out and you will see that troubled children are the ones that will take most of your time. <laughs> They will occupy your heart more, your mind more, because you're thinking of them, you are praying about them, you are concerned about them, 
were worried for their safety and and you know I, I mean they just absorb you they consume you and sometimes you have no peace because of the troubled ones and so if you are a praying person those are the ones that you'll be praying the most for so that God can spare them from trouble. So when you do that, then you are fitting your role, you are, you are taking your seat of the parent that is being described here on the scriptures. And so just as we, the children of God, you know, expect God to protect us, because even those who do not believe in God, who say that they don't believe in God, believe me, <laughs> when they are in certain situations, I'm telling you, they may not pray the way you and I pray. They may not go to church the way you and I go to church, but they too do call on God on their own way. They do call on God on their way. They will, they will worship God without even knowing they're worshiping God. <laughs> they will glorify God. They will call on God. Uh, and so, so just as we treat God with respect, with honor and in dignity, because the, the, the reason being that God is the source of our lives. We come from God, we are a product of God. We are God's creation. God literally manufactured us. It's so, it's so special. It's different the way God uh, brought into existence these other creatures and other, other life and plants and, and all, all the things that uh, have life in them. When God created us, God did not just speak a word like, let there be, be a human being, let there be a woman, or let be, there be a man. God took God's time, <laughs> you know, and God first went on the, uh, you, you, you could consider, it, if you take the example of a company, you could say a board of directors, <laughs> a board of direct, if you, if you are talking about a local church in the Methodist, we have local churches. And, and then uh, the, 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 highest, the highest body that governs the local church, uh, it, it is a council, the way all the leaders come together. We call it the council of church. God spoke in a council amongst God's self, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That is the board of directors in divinity, the three in one, one in three persons. Three persons in one God. We don't have three gods. We have one God, but this God manifests self as Father, as Son, as Holy Spirit. That's what uh, 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 in our theology we call, uh, we, we have this terminology that we say Trinity. You know, Trinity uh, 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 speaks to the three, you know, the three persons that make up just one God. It's a very difficult concept to understand or even to attempt to explain that we have three persons of distinct roles. The father has got uh, uh, the father's own roles. Uh, uh, the, the, the son has got the son's own role <laughs> and the Holy Spirit has got the Holy Spirit specific roles. The father created the universe, but, uh, but, but the son uh, came to save us. Uh, but the Holy Spirit is the, the, the energy, the electricity, the, 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 the everlasting presence in all of them uh, uh, who, who permanently channels the, 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 you know, the, the motivation. The, the, it, it's, it's like the vitamins, the minerals, and, the, and, and, and all that which gives life. Um, you, and yet, you cannot really, at any single second or half a second, separate the Father from the Son and the Holy Spirit. You cannot separate the Son from the Father and the Holy Spirit. You cannot separate the Holy Spirit from the Father and the Son. I mean, these three, <laughs> you, you can't really say that it, they're like a salad because salad, 
you you can separate the elements there. You can see, oh, this is tomato, uh, these are letters, uh, this is no, 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 they are not solid. I I I don't even know what to call them. <laughs> you see, you look at the example of Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ is the Son, right? God the Son. We have God the Father, then we have God the Son, and we have God the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus is God the Son, but you have no Jesus without the Holy Spirit. You know why? Because Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. The pregnancy is not a result of an egg or from the woman or whatever. No, no, no. The Jesus Christ's conception, it is the Holy Spirit sitting there on the womb of Mary and becoming a, like a human baby and being born. So the Holy Spirit is integral integral part of Jesus. And the father is the one who decided, he made the initiative. If you go to Isaiah, they say that there was a voice that said, whom are we gonna send out there? And Jesus came in response to that question, send me, I'm gonna save them. And Jesus came, is the lamb, you know, the lamb of God. So you can't separate them and the father, cannot operate or even exist without the Son because, uh, 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 and the Holy Spirit, because God himself, God, God's self is the Holy Spirit, is defined as the Spirit. So all these three persons are a spirit that perform different roles. And so, you know, we look at God as our heavenly parent. We come from God. And God spoke amongst God's own counsel, saying, let us now create one that will look like us. We are no longer just going to say words and let things happen, appear. No, no. Let us create. And this, this time, uh, uh, the, 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 what we're going to create, you know, and that creation is a literal manufacturing. God's hands, <laughs> God's on God's hands, picking on the, on the dust of the earth and the, the, the sun and, and, and just putting things together, the soil, and creating, you know, manufacturing this, the shape and everything, deciding where the nose should be, where the eyes should be located and why, where the mouth, and, the teeth, so you can chew the food. I mean, you name it. <laughs> so God is literally with God's own hand, all the three persons together. When it was time for the other things to be, to be called into existence, they were called into existence. God the Father spoke the word, let there be light. And that word that God the Father spoke, that word is God the Son. That is the one that we later came to know as Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, the Christ, right? So Jesus, the voice that called everything into being as God spoke that word, Jesus. You see? And things just happened by the power of the Holy Spirit. So that uno, uno deus, Uno Dios, <laughs> that one God is indeed our creator. And for that reason, and that reason alone is more than sufficient for us uh, to feel compelled to bow before God, to worship God, to give God glory and honor and worship. You know, we are eternally in gratitude to this God who brought us into existence as a result of God's, God's own work. Now, the reality of a, a, a childbearing, and it's really an extension of God's continued and uninterrupted creation. God does no longer pick on soil, sun, and then manufacture every single human being, no. 
God has given us the abilities, the orders, and the instruction to multiply. And so when we engage in that process of multiplication, we bring forth new creatures, new human beings, new uh, uh, you know, children into this world. Not us, but we are an extension. We are a continuation of God's act that God did with Adam and Eve, the first pair of human beings, you see? So when Adam and Eve bear children and we also continue to bear children, we are giving continuity to that act of God. We are not God ourselves as parents. No, we do not and we cannot claim to be God. But certainly, we do carry that image of the creator, God the creator, as children come out of us, you see. And it's only befitting that the children that we bear, just as God expects us, God expected this from Adam and Eve and all the people after Adam and Eve, you know to give God honor and glory. So it's only befitting that the children that you, you know, used by the will of God, help bring to this world, and you call you a children. They are not really yours, you know. <laughs> My children are not really mine. I am only a tool that God chose and God used to bring these two human beings to this world for God's purpose. They are here to fulfill not my will, not my destiny, but whatever destiny, whatever future, whatever God a uh, 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 given mission, you know, they were born on this world to do. But it's only befitting that these children also offers you as a parent, as their mom, as their father, you know, the honor and, and the respect, uh, 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 the same that all of us, you know, owe to God. And I would say that that is really regardless, regardless of how uh, your parents uh, are, you know, whether they are uh, problematic, whether they are in jail, whether they are uh, 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 on death sentence for a terrible crime that they for real committed, it does not matter. For you, that is your father. For you, that is your mom. So give them honor. Give them respect and support them any way you can. You know, you're never going to have another father. You're never going to have another, another mother. Your mother, your father, uh, you know, those are the ones through whom God created this miracle of you being here on this earth. Now, um, you know, it is a W, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a W responsibility. The one responsibility for the parents towards the children, we as parents are expected uh, to show the same love and the same example, the same modeling, you know, to our children so that our children can look at us and feel that confidence and gain that, uh, you know, that, that confidence uh, 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 as they see the example of a parent. And, and, and also on the other side of the coin is the children, it comes to children. The children are called to, uh, uh, you know, give a higher regard to their parent, not to despise them, to respect and to honor them and to listen to their advice, you know. Um, uh, and, 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 and those, those are instructions from God, those are laws, uh, that God has given, which come with a promise, you know, it comes with a reward. Um, uh, 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 like I mentioned before, the reward is that uh, if you comply with God's word, you will live longer, even on this earth. Uh, of course, we know that uh, uh, because of sin, um, you know, we do take each other's life very prematurely, very early. You know, we see little kids being shot dead 
uh, uh, being murdered by drugs, being murdered in uh, uh, enslavement and exploitation of all types, all types. And so all of that injustice, all of that sin, uh, you know that the, the, the outcome of sin is death. There's nothing good that you can get out of sin. When sin is committed, uh, unfortunately that sin will bring about shame, sadness, tears, and ultimately death. So we do lose um, uh, our people uh, prematurely because of sin. But the will of God is for us to live life as long, <laughs> as long as God alone have designed and have decided for us. And so, uh, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, this scripture is very important and it's very relevant um, on, on these days when we see just the opposite of these scriptures. You know, parents are bullied, parents are physically aggressed, beaten up by their own little children, not even very old children, all, all, always, even the very young age, uh, uh, the, the children become very perverse, very abusive and very aggressive, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 saying uh, uh, bad words and cursing their parents and, and there's no more respect per se, <laughs> you know, there's no more respect. It's, everything is just upside down. Uh, parents and children, they're just survivors, you know, each one uh, of, of, of for themselves. Uh, but that's not how it should be. That's not how it used to be, you know. Uh, parents used to uh, rely on their children as their children grow up. But nowadays, parents are on the run from their children as the children grow up uh, because and then all kinds of abuses and, and, and aggressions and, and disrespect and dishonor. And instead of honoring, we are dishonoring uh, our, our parents. And I mean, what kind of blessings can you expect uh, 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 to and from a child who dishonors their own parents and disrespect, abuse, uh, their own parents, both verbally and physically, you know, physical and verbal abuse by your own children of birth. It, 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 it hurts more than somebody slapping you on the face. Uh, it, it is worse than somebody out there whom you don't even know, shh, giving you a bullet on your face. When your own children are acting disrespectful, dishonoring you, cursing on you, and beating you up, uh, and mistreating you and enslaving you, uh, uh, that is, it's, it, is a, uh, it is a killer in itself. You can't take it. No parent can take that kind of, of attitude from their own children. But that is the unfortunate reality that uh, increasingly we see and we, we live under uh, in our families these days. Um, and sometimes the parents have become uh, elderly parents, and you know, when parents become elderly, sometimes they turn into little children themselves. And so they require greater sensitivity, attention, uh, love, and, and uh, a care. And that care can be very hard, you know, very exhausting and very difficult. Uh, uh, but uh, just remember that when you are a little baby, vulnerable and incapable, of taking care of yourself, unable to do any single thing that is good for your own self. If anything, uh, you will just harm yourself and your parents were there trying to protect you from harming yourself, from killing yourself, from injuring yourself. And they did that with patience, with love, and with great pride, raising you up and raising me up, you know, and so now it's their time. It's their time. They're on decline. Uh, the, everything in them is failing, including their mind. It's, it's failing. And, and so they become very difficult to care for. They're reluctant. They argue with you. You're trying to help them. They argue with you. They curse on you. They beat you up. <laughs> but they're elderly. 
and you know they're on their last days on air so don't 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 let your heart be aggravated and and so because you are the only loser if you try to retaliate to anything you are the only loser on on that because you know if anything you should only love respect care and, and take care of them as much as you can so it's both ways this law the law of god is always fair <laughs> it, it it is it is you know it goes both ways so thank you my friends i hope that uh our time today and our commentary of the scriptures have been helpful to you uh if you are likely to still Amen. have yes if you are still blessed to have your parents regardless of what situation they are in uh, please just remember uh, to pay back the love and sometimes um, you were raised by very harsh parents and you know very difficult and so you know don't don't pay don't really pay attention to to that forget those abusive memories and and, and what just do your part you know, keep your heart clean and, and 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 because it's between you and your god you know keep your heart clean and show mercy show kindness to your own mom and to your dad yes. as much as you can you yes. do your part well keep your soul yes. relaxed your mind at peace and your heart comfortable, knowing that you are doing the best that you can do, mm -hmm. you know, for the woman and for the man that helped bring you into this world. Don't wish that they go, they go to heaven sooner because you are, mm -hmm. they are giving you too much trouble. You are so tired, you can't take it. Don't, don't you ever wish that, you know? Mm -hmm. just, just pray to God, Lord, give me the strength, give me mm -hmm. the patience, and give me the resources and the the capacity to care for them until their last day and, 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 and let nothing go wrong on them because of me. If anything, use me as a blessing to their life all and all the way up to the last second of their life. And then when the Lord calls them home, you will feel at peace in your heart knowing that you did the best that you could do to help your mom and to help your dad. Even if they were a big problem to you, that's not up to you to judge your parents. Let God deal with that. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, beloved. Thank you so very much. I wish you a blessed rest of your week, and I will see you on Sunday for our service. Remember, this is our Mother's Day uh, service. So as you can notice, we already began to celebrate our mothers with this comment today. <laughs> and we will continue to be uh, showered by God's blessing and God's word on Mother's Day this Sunday. So bring a friend, invite a neighbor, invite your coworker, tell somebody about Jesus and invite them uh, uh, to the house of God. Thank you so very much. Let us now uh, uh, have a closing prayer. We are going to ask our lay leader, uh, our lay leader, Osna Smith. She will unmute herself and give us a closing prayer for the night, uh, praying for all the families and, and all the people of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank us for the word today, tonight. Bless each and every family present. Give them the love, the attention, and hope. And may they rest. May they have, may their home be a place of rest. The family, as well as their loved ones, be all in one accord. All these mercies I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you all so very much. Uh, uh, God continue to bless you all. Bye-bye now. Buenas noches. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay.